Hello, everybody. It's Sarah Seidelman, and I'm here with my dear brother, Keith Armstrong, who is the creator of the Sweet Ass Domination Deck and the Sweet, well, I guess it's called the Sweet Ass Affirmation Deck now, and the the new one that's just coming out now, and he's got a Kickstarter, so we'll get into that, talking about it, but welcome, Heath. So glad you're here. I'm excited. You have the you have the OG, the Domination Deck. That's Those no, are probably, rare. It's probably worth something. Yeah. I was an original Kickstarter supporter, so. Every time someone flashes one of those at me, I'm like, I know that they were an original Kickstarter supporter back in 2018, because no one else has those, and that's like, <laughs> it's cool. I don't even have one. I kind of want one. <laughs> like, I'd mail it to you later if you need it. <laughs> so yeah, I, I got to know Heath's work. Um, yeah, it must have been 2018. And I saw this Kickstarter come across my Facebook or something. And I was like reading these cards and they were so damn funny and so salty and hilarious. I was like, who is this guy? Like, yeah, I want to support his kicks. Like we need more of this in the self-help region. Like humor is so badly needed in this, um, this department of self-improvement, you know, self-help. Um, so we're so glad you're here doing that. Um, Likewise. you were, um, you were like this amazing, like vagabond of the universe. Like every time I see your pictures, you're like, right now you're in Mexico with palms waving behind you. Sometimes you're like deep in a forest, digging out mushrooms. Other times I, you're all over, but yet having that sort of incredibly free lifestyle, but at the same time, you're so productive. Like you're always making things and serving in this way. Like how do you balance that? How do you balance those things? Well, I'm a double earth sign or a, I'm a double air sign. And if I don't spend time frolicking through nature and being submerged in oceans or forests, then oftentimes I'm lost in the cloud and I'm doing, you know, sort of how you connect to Alice, the elephant. If I'm in my air element, I'm connecting to whatever the muse may be in, in the spirit realm to get creative ideas, but I have a hard time bringing them into physical existence without spending time on the earth. So it's like, how do you balance creativity with, with feeling yourself as a part of this planet and, and understanding that everything on the planet is this sort of conscious breathing element? Like if I'm in the ocean, I'm like, this ocean is alive. It's breathing. These waves are the heartbeat and remembering that and then being like, okay, well, how how does this relate to a thought that I had yesterday that I scribbled down on a piece of paper? And is this thing that's helping me possibly um, something I could use to help other people explode their greatness or go deep internally to heal whatever blockages or traumas they have so that they can then go out externally and help other people heal their internal blockages and traumas. So um, it's really about learning how to balance <laughs> this mania side of things and also this like we have to live here and and we're in these sort of uh constructs that have been created by society or whatever and and understanding that these constructs aren't really made by us and we don't have to stay in them and the more that we push the boundaries of of our self-imposed limits to our physical limits and past that the more we can create beautiful things that help us thrive and help other people around us thrive too mm. So well said. And then you're talking about that scrap of paper. That makes me think of another question I wanted to ask you. Many of us who are these creative maniacs, as you, as you say, like, you know, we have a lot of ideas like Alice in Wonderland, you know, like I often have 54 ideas before breakfast. And I know a lot of my clients do too. And it's like, then there can be the whole thing of like, but which idea is the right idea? Like, <laughs> Should I pursue this? And knowing it's going to take a lot of effort, for example, to get a deck done. I mean, people think, well, this is no big deal. You get a couple of images and say, no, people, this is a, <laughs> this is a devotion that kind of takes to make something so beautiful and well thought out and well written. So how, yeah, how do you wrestle with all your ideas? Do you have a system for that? Or I have a lot of systems systems. I think as a creative, we're best off being in the creating like I was talking about this earlier because it was just like this crazy moment watching the Kickstarter we just launched kind of go up and like the beauty of being within the creation and not having expectation of what that creation is going to do in the world but like half of us is we find all the joy and happiness in life by like in the middle of the act of painting and not worrying about what we're going to do with the painting afterwards or when we're scribbling down that thought that's inspiring us that we might've picked up from someone else, or it might've come through our head or whatever, 
the feeling that you get when you're doing that and not thinking about how I'm going to use it later. But it's very true that if you want to be able to sustain or make a living or like do other things, it, sometimes you have to learn the, the realism approach to things too. And that's how do I take this and like help it support me? And a lot of the affirmations I use sort of teach me and help me navigate that. Cause I'm always like talking about, okay, how do I release these things that no longer serve me and make space for the ones that, that do. And, and a lot of that comes with like, is our abundance mindset blocked is, do we think that we're not good enough? And um, there's a lot of systems, but I, I'm really like drastically drawn into trusting the flow of the process and not really knowing when I have 54 ideas come in my head, which one's going to appear, but more so trusting that like the one that continues to appear that I can't ignore, that's the one I need to keep following and paying attention to. I think it's incredibly helpful to write down all of them and review them often because I have just like notebooks and notebooks of ideas that came years ago, but like creating affirmation decks, I didn't have any plan on doing that up until about 2017 when this, you know, skid from <laughs> Unisquid from space starts telling me like, you have to make affirmation decks. Is Unisquid, he's in here, I think somewhere. I think he's on the, there's a little, there's yeah, Unisquid. That's Skid and the team battling the resistance gremlins. <laughs> But like getting these downloads of, at that point I had creating a journaling system and, and I was still like shy to do that because like making something and putting it in the world is hard. It's hard to like ask someone to look at what you made and like give you feedback or like use it. And, and I don't think there's any way to get through that easily without just trusting and surrendering that the right people in the right time will find what you've created and it all just kind of blooms like a flower and then decays when it needs to and then reblooms out of a new seed. Um, but it's, it's like, is this thing continuing to show up for me? And I just kept getting the thought in my head. And at that point, I, I clear things in my schedule to actually take time every single morning to work on those thoughts and to sort of bring them into form. And that's the beauty of creation. It's like, okay, this is fun. This is me creating. Like this is, I don't have to think about anything else. Just like what kind of affirmations are flowing through my head? What kind of messages do want to come out into the world? And then once you have these messy pages full of ideas, like you should, the, the notebook, I had a whole moleskin notebook of ideas of what could have been that deck. And I just, for seven days straight, I turned my phone off and I was just like scribbling stuff down. And most of the stuff I wrote down didn't make it onto a card, you know? And then comes the hard part of like knocking it all down to something that could potentially be useful and then bringing it into form. And I don't necessarily think you have to know how to do any of that. I think you just have to make sure you're dedicated to taking one or two baby steps a day to figure it out. And you have to go out into the world and you have to tell people what you're doing and ask for help because had I never asked for help and told people what I was doing, I would have never found someone who was like, Hey, by the way, I know someone who makes card manufacturers, like, you know, or manufacturers card decks. Maybe they can help you bring this into form. I would have never found that. I would have never found the person who originally taught me how to start doing a little bit with e-commerce and online marketing. And like, unless I was out speaking about it, which is the hardest thing in the world for me to do as a, a creative introvert, I'm so scared to speak about it. And I think, you know, a lot of us are kind of, taught to just be quiet and do what you're you know told or whatever and it's just all it's all a big lie it's it's ridiculous so the more you can just go for no i like to think of it that way go for no how many no's can i get in my pursuit of of my creativities how many times can i get someone to tell me no because if you're if you're going for no you're never going to be disappointed when you get a no but you're going to be real excited when a yes comes back and it's like oh weird i didn't expect that yes because i was going for no <laughs> But a lot of times when you go for no, you're actually asking for the correct amount of value of what you're worth too. Like, you know, creatives are the best at undervaluing themselves and saying like, I'll only work for this rate because I don't really believe, I don't know if anyone will like really love my work. But if you're going for a no, you're like three Xing what you're asking for. And a lot of times that confidence and that frequency actually relates better to the person receiving it. And they'll be like, this person's legit. They're, they know their value. I want to work with, <clears throat> I want to work with them. Yeah. Um, so it's just like a constant work of progress of, of meditating and, and listening to your thoughts and getting them on paper and then telling people about it and seeing what kind of actions can open up from that. Yeah. And that I totally related to when you said like the things that kind of keep boomeranging back, the same idea keeps coming. Or for me, like sometimes I had this experience a couple summers ago where I'd set this writing project on hold 
And it had to do with this certain uh, rare condition that's very, it's like one in, one point, one in 1.5 million people have it or something like that. But I kept randomly meeting strangers. And I, that summer I met somebody at the airport in Seattle and what did they have? This rare disorder. I was just like, hmm. And I knew then it's like, Sarah, this idea really, really wants you to take it all the way to the finish line. As much as you're scared, as much as you don't like it. I mean, as much as I like it, but I'm scared. I don't, I don't have what it takes to, to do this in a proper and good way. It's like the universe will kind of keep tapping, showing. Yeah. So I love that idea. So those are the ideas to go with the ones that kind of haunt you playfully anyway. <laughs> I don't know. Like when I watch, I can't express how many times that I've been like creatively blocked and I see, and I know you may feel a lot of resistance in creating things as well, but like when I watch you every single day, so consistently showing up with new creations I'm always like, oh yeah, I'm a pro too. Like I can do this. I can make something today because it's really easy to get on the other side of that and be like, I'll just write tomorrow. I'll just write the next day. I have another day, but you're so good at, um, you're, you're so consistent, like more so than most people I've ever met in my life. And so that's inspiring to me. Well, I am in the middle of a hundred day project, which I'm doing with a bunch of other people. So, and I'm, you know, spearheading it. So <laughs> that helps. It's like that community effort is good. And accountability. That's a good thought for anyone. Like if you are afraid you're not going to carry through, put yourself in charge of other people carrying through with you and then you can't let them down. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's exactly. the best way that I've worked through so many things and gotten to where I'm at. Being of service, finding a way to be of service like yeah. that. Yeah. And you talk a lot in these cards um, about habits, about taking action, about, I mean, that's what I love these. These cards remind me of, these are a great deck for you when you're like, you're ready to like, you're sick of the way things are, or you're just on this path of, you know, really becoming the hero. And uh, because that's when it's time to start taking some risks and start doing things that might be a little bit scary. Um, can you talk about your habits? Like, do you have a stack, like atomic habit style stack? Or <laughs> I'm referencing the book Atomic Habits, which many people are. James fans Clear. Of. Yeah, James Clear. Yeah, he's great. Um, my habits are very heavily based around showing up and writing every day. And if I'm not doing that, I see a very strong correlation of depression and overwhelm and frustration. And if I do show up in the morning and the first thing I do is write, I see a very strong correlation with a sense of productivity and gratitude. And, and you get ideas when you go through that creative, that creative process before anything else. It, like, it, it helps you create conversations with people that matter later in the day. It helps you build on the thing that you thought about the day before. Um, I do a lot of meditation. I do a lot of breath work. I have a very sacred sort of routine that has transformed over time. I mean, at first it was just me doing like five minutes of push-ups, five minutes of jumping jacks, writing for five minutes, journaling about my day, like the miracle morning thing, which works really well. But now I, I go very heavily into like praying to the elements and the directions and weaving together the, the day Lords per se in, in the Mayan culture, which is really like this balancing of your light side and your dark side. And uh, I think a lot of my habits nowadays are like me hugging the dark shadow side of myself and then seeing how that can be used in conjunction with the light side and in medicine ceremony and things like that. Mm -hmm. We, when I first got here, not when I first got here, but a couple of days ago, right before this Kickstarter launched, I was really struggling, like nervous, overwhelmed, frustrated, didn't know what was going to happen, like taking it out on my girlfriend. She's like the sweetest thing. And she's like absorbing it and holding it. And like, I don't ever want to put people in that position. Right. But it's like, when you're in it, you can't really feel it. And, it, and you get lost. And then we were walking upstairs one night to watch the sunset and this we walked by this uh, glass door where this other woman was staying and she was in a complete trance holding the doorknobs it's all glass inside of her condo coming outside full glass and just rocking back and forth with her keys in one hand and her hand on the on the door handle just standing there for a long time and and like the airbnb woman ended up showing up and like didn't know what to do and like some people were kind of laughing it off like it was funny and it really wasn't that oh i'm 
apologize about the the wind. The element is very loud today. She's she's showing up. Um, I'll cut my mic the best I can. It sounds fine. I really can't. Okay. Hear. Um, and I I just felt like I had to go. I have to go in there and try to figure out how to open this door and and how to um, sort of bring her back into the the realm or whatever and like get her to sit down. And so like Ashley and I went in that's my girlfriend and she works a lot in like the spirit and yoga world and Ashtanga and we have different balancing aspects to us, but long story short throughout the process of like trying to communicate with her while she's in this trance and her not opening her eyes and like barely mumbling words and then getting her to a point where she was kind of responsive to breathing into my hand on her back and like getting her to like open the door enough that we could get in and help her sit down. And this woman's name was Alice she she's like in this trance and she's telling us her name is Alice and I thought about you in the moment like oh and then you know out of nowhere she starts she's like I'm just here like she's like rolling her eyes around she's like I'm just weaving the Noelis which is the day lords like this is the Mayan the, the element it's all things in one the the archetypes essentially weaving together in unison and, and I was like oh my gosh like in this dark thing that I'm experiencing right now and then being in this shadow with her right now as she's experiencing whatever she's going through like it's all leading up to this thing that's going to come out into the world and I have to release all expectations to it and um the next day she didn't have any idea what the Noelles were or the Daylords like these are things that I've been working with in my meditations right like this is something I've been studying deeply the past year is working in the Mayan culture and, and, and like she had said braiding them and weaving them like this is a very serious uh, message but like she was like yeah oh, yeah whatever that means and I was just like oh. like in her sobriety when she was um, not sobriety but when in her like yeah. when she brought back the consciousness or whatever yeah and I, I just took that as a moment as a step step back to breathe and be like I'm in this creation like I'm going to release all expectations for this kickstarter and I think a lot of my habits revolve around that now it's like I know people who do, they, they, um, they use mezcal and other alcohols to, to salute their demons before they do creative things. You know, they, they really go deep within this, like these demons are not as bad as you think. They just need a hug. And the more that we can get into our darkness, the more that we can bloom that into some sort of light. Mm -hmm. And I, that might be a little bit deeper than what you were looking for, but that's kind of where I'm at. So I just wanted to share it. Yeah, well, absolutely. And how, wow, like people can truly be messengers of things, you know, that are quite yeah. mysterious. It reminds me of being when I was a medical student on the psych wards. I remember I was talking to this man, it was like a homeless man who had been brought into the VA. This was years ago, you know, and anyway, I was getting closer and closer. He was talking really softly and I was doing his H and P like his history and physical, you know, and so I was in there and I was just asking him all these questions. And then I asked him this question then, I don't remember what the question was, but I was getting closer because I couldn't hear him. He was talking so softly. And I got really close. And then all of a sudden he's just like, variety is the spice of life. He shouted. And I like, like shit, <laughs> shot back in my chair. But I think back to that moment many times because I think to myself, there were years where I wouldn't let myself explore anything. And now my whole life is based on variety is the spice of life. Like, I don't have to pick one thing to do. I can do a hundred things. I can do whatever I want. So is that on one of your cards? Uh, no, but maybe we'll make one someday. That's, that would be, I mean, your current project that you're doing with your little sayings, that's a perfect one for it. Yeah. Um, so let's pull some cards. I, well, I'm, I was going to share one that I thought was fabulous. Um, this card, which says, I hope it's going to reverse in the image today. We'll create some dope ass shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big fan of, um, yeah. Like we've been talking about creating something a little bit every day. So if you're a writer writing a little bit every day, like right now I'm working on, I'm kind of learning how to do digital art. And so I'm just trying to make a little every day with this hundred day project it takes 15 minutes. You know, that's it. No, I'm not going to spend more than that. I mean, some days I might spend less, but let me read what the card says. These are so awesome. I can't take it. You are creatively explosive, like a supernova. Nova. You play connect the dots with the stars and chew up asteroids for breakfast. When you create, you trigger infinite galactic parties full of stardust shooters, cosmos champagne, and extraterrestrial 
bong rips. I don't even know what a bong rip is, but I, <laughs> I probably um, enjoyed that. Okay, um, the sun just initiated three so 111 solar flares in celebration of your triumphs. The moon just lathered herself in glitter and went streaking for your grace. As you honor your creativity, the universe honors you. It's time to make some dope ass shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and I love this because as you were saying that it's like, it doesn't seem like much when we're creating, but when we're creating for those 50, even if you do 10 minutes a day, five minutes a day, there is a bliss that happens as you're doing it because you're completely immersed. It's like being in the ocean for a little bit. You're really swimming in the ocean, feeling that I'm in the ocean right now. And there's something that happens if you repeatedly show up every day and just do it day in, and it's mysterious, but you'll look back and go, oh my gosh, I have created a body of work or I have created an entire deck of cards, yeah. you know? So I Oftentimes love that. Oftentimes the it, it, things that will appear in your life on the back of a habit like that are, are like, some people would consider a life's work. It's like to write a book for a normal, ordinary, like everyday person seems like the biggest thing in the world. But if you legitimately just spend every day and you write one paragraph a day, you can do it in like less than half a year, you know, like it's, it's yeah. really, you, you start to see the enormity of your power in any situation with your creativity and uh, the process of, of what can unfold and how much it can drastically change your life with just these little daily habits. And it'll put you in a good mood. You'll begin to trust yourself. Yeah. You'll begin to think, wow, like I am capable of things that I, it'll change how you treat other people. It'll change how, it's just like all the promises that you ever wanted to have promised to you will be fulfilled if you just express yourself every day a little bit. I think you learn so much too. It just, can, it's like a constant humbling. Like every time mm -hmm. something comes out, you're trying to sort of carve it into the best form. But in that process, you're, shedding away all the things that don't feel right for you and, and like you get real with clarity like a, so much clarity with what you, what you are who you are what you're here to do and of course like you wouldn't be here if you weren't supposed to be so you know good point that <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that's um it's sort of like you're right i want to yeah it doesn't mean every day is going to be so easy you're going to make stuff you don't like you're going to make sentences that stink you know but then you, through that making of that bad, that quote, bad thing, you know, that's where we get the clarity of what is better. What is, what would be good. And every once in a while, you'll have a day where you'll just go, this is kind of awesome. I like it's it. It's the purge, like the, the purge of all the shit that comes up. And then all of a sudden there's like this goodness. It's like in medicine ceremonies, you know, like you have to purge these bad sentences up. And then all of a sudden you'll get one that's just like, oh, now I can dance. You know, it's, it's, just, yeah. Yeah. Super wow. awesome. Okay. And you have a card you say where I am quoted, which I'd forgotten about this card. Makes me feel very special. This is so cool when you begin to include your favorite <laughs> creators in your creations. Well, you got the jellyfish because I, the jellyfish. I feel like they're the most, there's some like mystical alien starseed type creature, <laughs> which is very relatable to you. Um, <laughs> There wasn't an elephant in the deck, but maybe maybe next time. Next time. Yeah, this one is, I am willing to let my life explode with greatness. And it says, you have unlimited potential to attract all the goodies you've ever dreamed of into your life. The opportunity is so big, it's scary. Our powers are beyond our comprehension. So we create securities, blocks, and obstacles to give us a greater sense of control. Every limitation you experience is there because you allow it to exist. There is comfort in not pushing yourself to be all that you can. Everything that you've ever wanted also wants you. Will you allow a meeting of the magic? As our friend Sarah always asks, how good are you willing to let it get? Mm, so great. Because so that, that, that one banger, like how good are you willing to let it get? I don't know how many times I've said that to people in this. And like, there's, there's always this pause in the response of like, Wah, 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 wah. like oh you're right <laughs> like and i have to credit alice with that question she really helped me formulate yeah. that so and it's great because people will remind me with that when i get down in the dumps they're like sarah how good are you willing? and then i'm like oh you guys thank you so much you know <laughs> like but that's you know that's why we do i mean we teach what we need to learn right like i think yeah. that's why i needed to 
I need these. I need my card deck. You, I need your card deck. All these affirmations to keep us on the path and keep us in the positive, not necessarily in the positive, but in the thinking of like, yeah, what, what do I, what action inspired action could I take? Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you like, uh, what, you know, what's the hardest thing that you have to do, you know, about this dream life that you're creating, you know, that you're in the process of, you know, participating in this universe, like what's the biggest challenge for you, um, in this creative process, I guess. I think it's mental health for me and, and just not allowing myself to identify with versions of myself in the past in such a way that it controls me and being okay with like loving myself, even for the worst things that I experienced, because I thought, you know, <laughs> up until meeting certain magical teachers like ayahuasca or combo or, you know, different experiences with different cultures around the world. Like I thought that I had worked through anger and temper and, and like alcoholism and things that, that really used to, sort of run my thought process in my life. And I think the process in the last four years has really heavily been identifying that like this stuff still is in there and it has to come out. And the only way for it to come out is to deeply feel it. And sometimes when you're deeply feeling it, you're playing the part. And how do you witness yourself doing these things and feeling and acting a certain way and not allow yourself to identify with solely that aspect of it, but instead watch it kind of flow through you and remove itself from your body so that you can create space and heal a little bit mm -hmm. because I can get stuck in that for a long time and I can become very toxic to be around and I can, I can get real depressed and, you know, sit in a room and, and whine and be snappy and like have attitude and because I'm feeling that. And when you feel mm -hmm. a lot of pain, you kind of inflict it on everybody else around you. Um, so that's the hardest part for me to navigate for sure. But the more that I lean into it instead of hide from it, the more I'm able to release it and, and experience it less and less. So that's why a lot of times with my habits and meditations, I'm focusing on that. Okay. What am I feeling today and, and why? And uh, do I need to watch myself go through this pain or like, do I need to cry? Do I need to scream? Do I need to, to allow myself to be angry for the next three hours? And, and I think with children, if we could just, start with teaching them at such a young age that that's okay and not to hide it or suppress it when you're angry then maybe as adults we wouldn't have to experience these types of feelings and blocks in our creativity and things but i do think there's a nice awakening going on with that right now and i, and I know a lot of amazing parents who are doing this and i'm seeing it change and like how their kids grow up and how wonderful and different it is from sort of what i felt like i experienced and um that's the hardest part but like you know, there's always sort of, all sorts of hard things with trying to bring products into form and, you know, manufacturing or trying to sell something on the internet and all these skill set type things. But there's also like unlimited outlets for people that are experts in those areas that can help. And so yeah. if you get really good at attracting abundance, then you can get really good at asking other people to help you and just trading a little bit of your abundance for it instead of worrying about how you're going to figure it out yourself. Absolutely. And I think you hit the nail on the head. Like if you want to create something, a book, a deck, something that you're going to share with other people, you, you can't do it alone. You're going to have to ask for the people. You're going to have to out yourself, share your idea, talk about it, which is horrifying at first, but it's the hero's <laughs> journey and there will be helpers. They will appear if they're not the first five people you tell about it. And maybe it's the sixth, the 29th, but <laughs> don't give up hope. <laughs> yeah, never just keep going, keep getting dirty, get filthy and, and, yeah. Stop trying to figure it out as my cosmic spirit mother Brie always says to me. <laughs> so guys, the Kickstarter is on. I got the, I got the 10 packs at wholesale because I'm going to gift these to all my dearest and closest friends because I think these are you just the so first. awesome. You were the first supporter of all of the people that have flushed through. So that, ah, was, that's so cool. Yeah. So support it and give yourself the gift of getting these cards. And there, if you're a coach, a yoga teacher, I mean, these are so fun to bring out and share with your peeps. You will, yeah. will delight people. Thank you so much, Heath, for being on. And, um, and I'm going to put a link for the, the Kickstarter and so people can find you and how to follow you on Instagram and everywhere else.
That's amazing. Guess, guess what? What? Uh, before I got on this call, Kickstarter had us ranked at number one in all of illustration what? on their, yeah. That's so cool. I know. It's like wild. There were like 7,200 projects on there. Amazing. So it wasn't like on their homepage or anything, but if you went to illustration and you filtered it by popularity, we were at number one. So that's so awesome. like weird vision to reality type stuff. And so yeah, cool. A lot of gratitude. Thank you so much, Heath, for being here. Guys, go Thank get you. your decks. <laughs>